You're listening to Metal Attack MTL with Double D here on MetalMessiahRadio.com. Welcome to Metal Attack MTL here on MetalMessiahRadio.com. Joining me right now is none other than Frank Three Gun Novnik uh, from Hatebreed. You might know him also from uh, his past work with Ringworm, Terror, and Integrity. And uh, currently, right now, the guys uh, he's with Hatebreed touring along uh, with uh, Five Finger Death Punch and All That Remains on the Share the Wealth tour. So let's start this off. Uh, basic. Well, the question I want to know is, how'd you get the nickname Three Gun? Oh, I just did something stupid when I was younger, and like I never really liked the nickname. Um, the Dwid from Integrity gave me that, and I just I've had it for years, but you know I just I kind of tried to phase that out because I never really was a fan of it. But uh, we just had an incident once where I was roading for them. And, well, I was before I was even in Integrity. This is probably like around 1993, 94, and. You know, these guys used to start all kinds of stuff back then, used to carry guns and stuff, so I got stuck carrying these because a fight happened and the police were there, and it was really a bad situation for me, so, you know, oh shit. <laughs> I thought it would have something to do with maybe, like, uh, music or something with, uh, no, <laughs> maybe I had all. three favorite guitars as well. <laughs> That's cool. All right, uh, well, we know that this is the final month of the uh, the tour right now with um, All That Remains and uh, Five Finger Death Punch, so, um, you guys, what are you going to do after the tour? Are you guys going to head back to the studio, maybe work on a new album? or No, we go to uh, Soundwave Festival in Australia at the end of February, and then we go to South America at the end of March with Lamb of God. But uh, we do have plans to make a new record next year, so we definitely will be in the studio at some point next year, making a new record and have it out for next year, because it's been a while. Um, we know that uh, also uh, Hatebreed, uh, seem, well, you guys seem to come to Montreal, our city here, quite often. Um, is that just a coincidence, or is there any, some kind of draw that, uh, you know, brings you guys here? Well, we go to every city quite often. I mean, we're on the road a lot, so if a certain tour brings us here, so be it. You know, I know we were here with Cannibal Corpse, and I think we were here the last time with... Jeez, I don't even remember um, the last time we were with, but um, we, um, you know, it's where, wherever, whoever will have us, you know. We, Canada's good to us, and Montreal especially, so, you know, why not come back? This is a, you know, we're usually headlining when we play, but this is us coming back and supporting and playing in front of new people because Five Finger Death Punch is so popular now, and we're playing in front of new fans every night, so, so it should be a little different tonight, I think. All right, cool. And, um, well, one thing I heard about you guys, and I wanted to know if this is true or not, uh, I actually got into an argument last night with a friend over it. Do you guys uh, use set lists? I heard that... No, we don't. No? Is, did, like, when you first joined the band, like, were you, was it like that way in the beginning for you? Mm, we may have been, but we haven't in years. Well, all, all, we, all that we have is Jamie has a list of songs on the drum riser every night, and it's about 50 songs. And he just decides what one of those songs we're going to play, and he yells them out. And we have to listen to what he says and play it. So it, the set's different every night. You know, it's whatever he yells out off that set. It's, it's a sheet. We don't... Nobody else has a sheet on stage, it's just him. He has one on the drum riser, and a matter of fact, I'm about to write it up right now. Um, and it's about 50 songs, and it, we usually end up playing on this tour about 13 of those, you know, and they could be any song, you know, about. so there is no set list. Though. It's a different set every night from eight. All right, so, uh, well, I guess I was gonna, I was gonna ask if you guys were gonna fun around with anything from uh, for, uh, for the Lions there? No, not on this, no, no. Yeah, so. I mean, we're, we're only playing 40 minutes a night, so. Yeah, but that's about like 50 hate read songs right there. <laughs> well, it's only 13 about, so we have to play, you know, the ones that everybody, the staples of the set, obviously, and then we get to throw in a couple more. Okay, um, well, there's something uh, I wanted to know about. Uh, what's with, uh, well, this may shock uh, a lot of the fans, but uh, some some people who don't know much about it, but uh, yeah, I heard you, you're a big major fan of Disney. Yeah. And um, how could you be? That's such an evil corporation. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, I really don't care about corporations and things <laughs> like that. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm not one of these uh, political people. And we're, not, and, and we're not really political in the United States as opposed to maybe like Europeans or something like that. Like, especially in the music scene. Some bands are. That's not our thing. I mean, fun is fun any way you slice it. And uh, Disney World's a great place. I live six miles away from it. And there's a lot to do over there. And I spend a lot of time there when I'm home. You know, but I also spend a lot of time fishing. Um, in the Gulf or in the ocean, and I spend a lot of time, you know, vacationing. Where I, I, I mean, I live in Florida, so it's always sunny. I spend a lot of time in my pool. You know, I don't have... These guys have other bands and stuff. I like my time at home, so... But I love Disney World, a fan of it. A fan of movies, you know, I'll be in my bucket night watching uh, Twilight Zone episodes or old Disney movies. <laughs> so. 
So you're the, you're the guy who likes to relax in the band more than anyone. Well, I think everybody does. It's just that I don't. I think that I've got I've enabled myself to have more time to do it. You know, Jamie's on the go all the time with all his projects and things. But I'm I'm the I'm definitely the oldest person in the band, and I definitely act the youngest in the band. <laughs> That's cool enough. I'm all about fun. Like here, here. Cheers to that. All right. I'm, I'm joined right now by uh, also here with us is um, Metal Girl, who's going to be here asking a few questions. Uh, thanks for helping out with the interview. Yes. Um, go ahead, fire away. Um, my question is, um, I know you have a clothing, uh, clothing stuff, right? Uh, be aware. I had, I did for a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of, it's. It, we don't really do much with it. We just like to give it to our friends and stuff. So. Okay. So you don't manage that as a, a company. For no. Yourself? I mean, Chris and I do it for fun. So we just like to give it to our friends and let them wear it. Yeah, friends and bands. We don't really. You know, it's not really. It's not like hate wear or something like that where it's a full operation. But that would take into, that would cut into my fun time too much. <laughs> <laughs> so what what comes to you for um, well. It brings you, what brings you to, to have this kind of collection, like, uh, because you're a beer fan? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I am. I like to drink Budweiser beer a lot, and, you know, I like to party and have a good time. It's just like everybody else, I guess, um, that likes to party, but, uh, you know, beer where it's funny, and it doesn't have anything to do with music, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of bands have clothing companies that are directly, have something to do with the band or something to do with their playing, and this is just for fun, you know, it's just something... We, I can make up funny sayings, you know, and uh, maybe college kids would like it or something like that. I don't know, but uh, it was, it's all for fun, so. Okay, so, uh, and my other question for you was, um, uh, so, as I see, you want to relax, so you will never go to another band to play music, right? Well, I, I talked about doing a side project with Randy from Lamb of God, but that would just be for fun, too. I mean, with the, with just between he and I alone, um, our, our touring so much that it would be hard for us to collaborate and I'm sure we would end up probably getting people from other bands maybe and that would make it really hard so it's a lot of headaches when you get involved with something like that but um, you know I, I would like to do it for fun like a punk rock band or something I, I'm a huge fan of punk rock and, you know I, we talked about it but that's really about the basis of it you know I have a couple songs here and there but you know we haven't really gotten off the ground or anything like that so you know like I said before I love my time at home you know, I've recently, I've, I've, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio my whole life, and, I, and I'm done with the cold weather. You know, I've been in Florida for three years now, and my time that I'm at home there, I like, you know, I have a lot of family and friends that, since I live there now, they come and visit me. So, my son, my son lives in Hawaii, he comes and visit me, and my, my mother and my father come down, and I, I moved my sister down there, so. I like to, I like that when I'm home, you know. And, and as awesome as this tour has been, I, I can't wait to go home because now we're getting into the cold weather, and we're seven weeks into the tour. You know, we've been out on this a long time. Not to mention it's Christmas time too. It's I mean, Christmas yeah. time exactly. We don't get it makes home. you miss home a little more. Sure, and we don't get home till 19th. So. Wow. <laughs> and uh, how do you manage? Uh, because the other people from the bands have different uh, different bands also. So uh, the practice, how it is. Is it hard? Is it? No, because hate breed is the number one priority. So everybody okay. makes sure there's time for it. You know, that's the best thing about it. I mean, everybody does their side project, but there's never any focus lost on the band. You can tell when you come see us play. You can tell by how professional we handle ourselves. And you know, side projects are side projects, and, and hate breed's the main thing. You know, so uh, I know Chris has a couple bands, and Wayne's in one of them, but you know, Matt doesn't. Matt doesn't, uh, Matt doesn't, uh, have another man or anything like that, so, but we make time for hate breed, we have to, you know, that's the number one thing, and it takes up about eight months of our year, at least, just to worry along. Uh, a couple of closing questions I have, okay, um, well, I know that you're, uh, you're a big Kiss fan, that's, uh, basically what in influenced you to pick up a guitar. How old were you when you first, uh, got your first guitar, and what kind was it? My first guitar I probably got when I was like 13 years old, maybe 12. It was a harmony guitar, and um, I've been playing since then. So. And then I am a huge Kiss fan, for sure. Uh, what was the first song you learned how to play? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Crazy Train, maybe. Okay, and one uh, one last question to close it off. Okay, if two bands fucked and Hate Breed was the child, what two bands would be the parents, in your opinion? Wow, that's a good one. 
I would say Bolt Thrower and Mad Ball. You know, we, we, when you listen to our music, it's kind of a hybrid of the earache bands of the early 90s, like Bolt Thrower and Garkus and, and um, Entomb with the uh, New York hardcore sounds that got in front of Mad Ball and Warzone. You know? I think that it's, it's, it's a fair, um, a fair comparison. We we are a crossover band. You know, everybody can argue all day they want. Oh, he breathes a metal band. He breathes a hardcore band. But we're really both. You know, at the end of the day, so, which is great. You know, we we get to be in both worlds. And not a lot of bands from either scene do. You know, we're fortunate enough to be a band to come from a small hardcore scene and break into the big metal scene and be in both worlds. And not a lot of bands can have success doing that. So. And uh, one last question I had was. Um, out of all the songs in Hatebreed, uh, what's your, do you have like any particular favorites you like to play? I like to play To the Threshold off of Supremacy. It's my favorite song to play. It's one of my favorite Hatebreed songs. I like to play Puritan off the first record, even though we don't play it that much. Maybe once or twice a tour. And those are cool. You know, obviously, um, when you play I Will Be Heard, Destroy Everything Every Night and stuff. And those, those, those are great songs, but you, you know, you just want to play them every night. But then again, we play To the Threshold every night, and I, I never get sick of it, so. All right, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time, Frank. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks guys. for the interview. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're listening to Metal Attack NTL with Double D here on MetalMessiahRadio.com. <laughs>